Hi YouTube family, hi YouTube family, how are you all doing? How are you all doing? Hope you're doing great, staying in faith. Welcome to today's video, yes. And for our new subscribers, we wanna say welcome, welcome to you guys. I realize we got a couple of new subscribers from our last video. I just wanna say thank you guys for subscribing. And for those watching, if you haven't subscribed, join the family, yes, join the community. Yeah, we are a faith-based community. We talk about faith, lifestyle, finances, everything that pertains to life and body. We just help each other navigate life and live victoriously here on earth based on the word of God, which is the Bible. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about money. Yes, I realized from the from the previous videos I did, you guys really enjoyed the videos I made on finances. So I'm going to be going back there just talking about money. It's been long. We visited this topic. Let's go and talk about money. So today I'm going to be sharing some bible scriptures and just encouraging someone out there on some of the factors that you need to look into which is a push that has kept you in debt that has made you a debtor especially in a society where we live where debt has been so normalized and debt people have made debt look like it's a blessing like if you don't have 10,000 20,000 credit card it's like you are not existing if you don't have a 2021 car on lease it's like you're not existing if you're not raising the the, the the biggest apartment that is consuming more than three quarters of your salary it's like you're not living the American dream or the Canadian dream or the European dream which is which are all lies from the devil yes they are because all those things are not based on Bible principles now I'm gonna be looking at some reasons why we find ourselves in this circle and how we can break from them looking at some encouraging Bible passages so let's go the first reason I'm gonna be talking about is social media yeah the media has made us believe that what you have is not good enough like the car you're driving is not good enough your apartment you're living is not good enough it makes you feel like the phone you are using is not good enough people want to update because of what they see on social media and this can be so it can be so enticing because one gateway to our heart is our eyes and we have to watch what we see or we have to be able to be disciplined not to allow what we see really influence play in the areas of our money yep so the first Bible scripture we're going to read about this that will encourage us is the book of Hebrews 13, 5. If you see me looking down, look at my phone, Hebrews 13, 5. The NLT version says, don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God said, I will never fail you. God said he will never fail us. We should not love money, be satisfied with what you have. Don't get into the habit of chasing shadows because of the pressure of social media. Be careful, keep yourself out of debt. The second thing I want to be talking about is impatient. Ooh, we are very impatient as a society, as a community. Our generation is very impatient. We want everything now. We want everything now. I want all this now. The habits or the culture our parents have of saving to get to getting what they need is gradually just fading away. You don't hear people talk about saving much. You don't hear people say, oh, I'm saving up in five years to buy a car or I'm saving up in the next seven years to buy my house. We are all looking for instant gratification and instant gratification is one of the reasons why we are caught in this debt or where we could be struggling in a circle or in a web of debt. So to get out of this, a Bible scripture that we're going to read to encourage us and just to help us realize that this is not a healthy thing as a child of God. Like instant gratification should not be our way of life. It is the book of 1 Peter. I'm putting it down in my phone. 1 Peter 5 verse 6. Humble yourself therefore under God's mighty arm that he might lift you up in due season. Humble yourself. Be humble. Even in your finances, be humble. You don't don't live a life to prove a point. You nobody remembers the, the, the dress or the car you drove three years ago. People don't really care. We are just under this illusion, under this, the lie of the enemy that people really care. People don't really care. So humble yourself. Live a humble, a satisfying life, a life debt free. Be humble. Be humble. Don't sell your peace for money. So the third thing I'm going to be talking about that could be a reason why we are caught up in this web of debt as Christian is the lack of contentment. Are you still here? Yet the lack of contentment. Many of us are not contented with what we have. Many of us, we, 
we, we don't enjoy our own things. Apart from instant gratification, even when we get those things that we want now, 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 the next day, we, we lost taste of it. We are not contented, we want more. Literally, we are like, we, we, we are holders, we are holding things and just looking for more, we are not contented. I remember when I used, I used to grow my grandmother, if they had a couple of clothes, that was good and fine. They could change it, they could style it out, they could switch, they could sew, they could... Re re but we are not. Nowadays, if people who even have a full closet, still struggle to look for a clothes to go to church. Still, you still hear them say, oh, I don't have a dress, I don't have a clothes, and there's this birthday party or there's this occasion, I don't have a dress, I want to go buy a dress for this occasion. But you have a lot of clothes in your closet. That's, that's, you're not contented with what you have. So we have to learn to be contented. We have to learn to be contented. Let's look at the book of 1 Timothy 6 from verse 6 to 12. This is a long one. 1 Timothy 6 from verse, I'm going to be reading. The NIV version, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be, con we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Verse 10 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And pierced themselves with many griefs. Some of us, because of money, we are working 12 hour shift. We can't come to church. We, can't, we don't have time to spend with our family. We can't worship. We don't have our one on one devotion time with God. We have money has become an adult in our life because we are not contented. We are not contented. The fourth thing I want to talk about stemming from the place of contentment is the fact that slaves to money. We have become slaves to money. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, let's look at that. It says in the book of Proverbs, 22 verse 7 the niv version says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender we have become slaves to the lenders we before it's our payday we already have debtors at our door banging our doors invisible debtors because we have the debt banging our door and we cannot help but run out haters to be able to pay this debt we know what it is to be slave to our lenders. Remember the widow whose husband um, had a lender and the, the, the lender came to take away her son. That's how much debt can enslave somebody. So once it could not be our children, but our peace of mind, our time, our time with God, and our, our family time, our vacation time, we have lost it because we have become slave to lenders and we have become slave to money. The fifth thing I'm gonna be talking about is when you start trying to look at your finances and trying to eliminate debt as much as possible, one thing is sure, the storms of life will come. The enemy will raise ugly head against you. The enemy will want to show you that it is not possible to live a minimal life and be happy. The enemy will want to put this fast pace, um, go get now, instant gratification life before you and make you think that is the normal. But I have an encouraging scripture for you, for you to understand that your job the things you want after they are not your source they are resources god alone is your source let's look at psalms 59 verse 17. oh my strength to you i sing praise for you oh god i my refuge the god who shows me unfailing love the bible says he is our strength the god that shows unfailing love our fortress so he is our fortress. So run to God, make God your anchor, make the word of God your anchor, the provision of your anchor, and stand upon the word of God and believe God that God will provide, he will shield you. Yes, I'm not saying don't go out there and work. Go out there and work, but don't make money a God. Don't make money an idol. Don't become slave to money. I'm not become slave to your lenders or to the system that they have put in place. I just want to bring out this scripture, this Bible verses to encourage somebody struggling with your debt or struggling to balance your life as a Christian. That's some of the scriptures to help you watch out, look into it. Maybe there's one area in your life where you need to adjust to be able to have a wholesome life, a peaceful life. A a life that you have time for God, time for your family, and time for yourself. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.
if you are just bumping into all if you have been here and you haven't subscribed love you all with the love of god see you all in my next video